let's look at the function biomechanically of the forearms within the golf swing. When people say I'm rolling my wrists in the golf swing, it's not really very accurate. The wrists hinge and cock, but basically when the club face rotates and the palms of my hand rotates, that actually a function of the forearms. Now if I put my arms out in front of you, I can turn my forearms out 90 and in 135 degrees. When I put my upper arms against my rib cage, I then reduce my forearm rotation. I go 90 to my right and 180 to my left. And that's basically uh, the range of movement that the palms and the forearms and the hands have within the golf swing. Do you remember me saying it's like having the spokes glued together? That's what's happening. The palms have come together, but my forearms rotate 90 and then 180. So it's not really wrist roll, it's forearm rotation within the swing. Now let's go back to one of Alex's drawings from the mechanics of golf. And this is a fascinating picture to me. Um, you could write a whole book just on this one image. What we have here is the American hand action. Um, we could say that Jack Nicholas and his coach Jack Grout, Byron Nelson and Tom Watson, they had an understanding of the club head staying square through impact for a long, long time and the knee flex remaining constant. So basically when Tom Watson burst on the scene at, Car on the scene at Carnoustie in 1975, he won uh, in a playoff against Jack Newton. Uh, a lot of British pros like Bernard Hunt would have been playing and they'd have been exhibiting this movement and you can see that the forearms have flipped over and the left leg has braced. Now this is a throwback to the days of Hickory. A Hickory head would twist because the shaft had torque in it. It was amazing how much you could actually twist the head of a Hickory club. So this is a throwback. And essentially because the Americans were playing golf, staying the blade staying square through impact for longer, the Brits in the Ryder Cup team, their club face was square for about a millisecond. So this is going to endure and be more consistent. And this is going to be more erratic. The difference is the forearms are functioning beautifully and simply in the American type swing and they were flipping over in the earlier. So let's have a look at that in golfing terms with a six iron because if we come to understand the function of the forearms, which is shaping the shot, fade or draw, we can find that very helpful when we're on the golf course. So biomechanically, my forearms can rotate through 90 degrees in the backswing and their full potential is to go 180 in the follow through. When you're putting, that's a very passive, very quiet activity. There's no form rotation at all. And when you're chipping, the forearms are very quiet. Once you go into a fuller swing like a pitch, and then onto the driver, then boy, the forearms are starting to work. But the good thing is, you choose the difference. I find it helpful to use a tennis racket because most people who play tennis at any level being a novice or intermediate player, they understand that in tennis terms that is topspin and that's form rotation in a positive sense. This is backspin and backspin in tennis is a fade in golf. Topspin in tennis is a draw in golf. So biomechanically the forms rotate 90 to our right and 108 to our left, but they represent 25% of the golf swing movement itself. Half the golf swing came from the shoulders, a quarter comes from the forearms, and later on I'll show you the wrists. Now on the GC2 simulator here, I'm out on the golf course, there's a couple of big trees in my way, and I'm just going to utilise the club face and manipulate the face with the hands and the forearms. I'm going to give you a top spin shot in tennis that happens to be a draw spin shot in golf. So I'm aiming at the tree trunk initially, but walking around the circle to my left, then the face, the blade, everything is now aligned right of the trees. Now if I hit a normal shot from there, I deliver a normal loft and the ball would pop up and hit the canopy. But because I'm going to be actively imparting top spin, the club face becomes stronger, there's less loft, the ball will go lower, and then when it lands it will run. So draw spin, like top spin, is very creative and it will make the ball scamper. So there's the address bridge, just go around the circle, let me ride the trees and now I'm going to impart lots of draw spin, top spin. Here we go. See the ball curling nicely and going down onto the green. 
I didn't quite get there, but I actually hit the six iron 176 yards. I wasn't going for a great distance, but because I am part of the top spin, the ball ran and scampered down the hill. So that was the use of top spin. Let's find another tree, and this time we'll fade it from left to right. So now I'm going to use my forearms in a more sort of defensive way. In tennis, it would look like backspin. Now, when you hit the shot flat and then go to backspin, you're adding loft. Same with the golf club. I can hit the ball with pure, this is forearm, but if I open the face, I'm adding loft and I'm imparting a face spin backspin movement. And because I want to move the ball from left to right for you this time, it's very hard to do with the six iron of earlier. The six iron's great for drawing the ball, but to make a ball move visibly from left to right for you, I need to go to a four or a three iron. So, take the normal setup, go around the circle. I'm now aiming left of the, tr of the tree and the overhang, and I'm now going to impart lots of backspin, cut spin movement. Around the circle, out to in, slip the club across the ball. You can see the ball is curved from left to right. Just on the apron of the green. It flew 154 yards through the air, went about 160 in total. But let me do that for you one more time. Whenever you're shaping a shot, I think it's wise to start off with a neutral, normal setup and then modify for the shot in question. If you go straight in and set up for fade or for draw, it's easy to overdo it. So here we go. Bog standard four iron setup, round the circle to my right. I'm now aiming to the left. The face has gone with me. I'm going to impart backspin across the ball. So here we go, backspin, fade spin, keeping the forearms passive through impact. Made the classic mistake of hitting it pure, it's gone too far. But I think you can see the ball is moving very strongly from left to right. And it's a simple thing. Use lofted clubs to foster draw spin, top spin, and use straight face clubs to foster backspin, fade spin. You know it makes sense.